Hello, Internet. Um, I thought I would do a video kind of running through a bunch of NuGet packages I've made. Um, so if you're a C-sharp developer, these are all here and easily available, um, mostly for modern versions of .NET uh, and mostly game related. But there is one maybe interesting work related one. I think it's a little niche. Um, and I do also have more stuff on, on my GitHub for JS and just all kinds of random stuff you can go through here, as well as the source code for all these NuGet packages. So if you want to look at how any of them work or whatever, that's all good. And all my stuff is under a super permissive license. So anyway, if I just do a quick little rundown, uh, in case any of these are helpful, just to call attention to them. I've been, main, been maintaining some of them for a number of years now. Uh, and, you know, they've got some downloads, some people are enjoying them, so, you know, they're not complete garbage. <laughs> I think they're, I think they're good, and I've learned a lot about NuGet package um, deployment, uh, how to put icons in there, how to make sure that there's, um, uh, like, like, source code and, and, and links to GitHub so that when you jump to declaration, it'll actually download the code from GitHub, and all these things. I can make a video about that if that's interesting. Um, but anyway, I have put effort to make these, like, good, modern, usable. Uh, and they do solve real problems. I've developed these things to solve problems that I've had, uh, both, again, for fun when making games or at work. So anyway, let me just run through them. Um, so Ben Makes Games Random Helpers, which I just updated very recently, you can see, uh, has a bunch of stuff to help you make random content for your game. Um, so, you know, rolling dice, pulling items out of lists, which will be obsolete once .NET 8 is out, but it's not out yet. Um, pulling items out of dictionaries, which I don't think they're doing in .NET 8. Uh, getting a bool, and then also inspired by Unity, things like, I want to get a point in a circle. That's a function you might want. Um, you know, values, shuffling, and then some weirder things, and then it's just some aliases. So whatever, it's a bunch of quick things to help you quickly generate content um, for games, and I've, you know, put examples for all these things, how to use them, you know, and it kind of hinting at use cases for when you might use some of these functions. So anyway, that's the first one, and the most popular. That's the one that people uh, seem to really like. Second one, Play Play Mini. I made a video about this before. This is much bigger <laughs> than Random Helpers and harder to summarize, uh, but this is a whole framework for making um, 2D games mostly. You could probably technically do 3D, but it's really not designed for that. 2D games using mono game, uh, but adding a little more structure. Mono game is very low level very unopinionated, just kind of says, I don't know, here's a thing that does keyboard, but then doesn't provide really some common things you want to do, like, okay, but did someone press it and let go? Like all the keyboard will tell you by default with mono game is, is someone currently pressing it? And that's not as helpful. Um, and then also it just doesn't enforce any kind of structure to your game, uh, including lots of modern things that a lot of game engines do, like state machines to, to handle game state. And, and then also dependency injection, which you, I don't know, depending on your background, you will miss when it's when it's absent. Uh, so this is a really big framework. I have a video about it. Maybe I'll make sure there's a link to that in the end card or description or something. Um, but that is another thing I have. Uh, and again, much harder to go over. I've written a lot here and again, made a, a tutorial video that kind of walks through making this simple game. And then there's a lot of Play Play Mini add-ons. So this one isn't really an add-on. This is for a uh, command line interface for making skeleton templates. So I don't know if, if you've done much um, command line.net stuff, this is, will look super familiar to you. Um, but this le just lets you quickly make um, a skeleton project for Play Play Mini. And I've made a Tetris clone, a simple, stupid Tetris clone that you can just see and get a sense of what a game made with Play Play Mini would look like. Um, so that's another one. And then I also have a UI framework. It's not as developed as the main thing, but it's pretty good. It gives you um, not quite drop downs, but but select things where you click left and right um, buttons and a kind of Windowsy inspired way of composing UI through code by putting you know buttons inside windows uh, and or or inside other containers. It's, you can you can do these nested elements and build your own elements out of smaller components if you want, uh, which some of the the built-in UI elements do. So I won't click into that one. That's another whole big thing. You can see we're getting a slightly less popular here. Um, but that's a, depending on the game you want to make, that can be really useful. I've been using it for making a visual novel. Don't know if I would publish that thing. Um, and in fact, a visual novel engine, which I maybe will release later. So anyway, play, play, mini UI. That's another thing. Hex grid. This is some math uh, helper functions for doing hex grid type math. I've I've uh, been working on a tactics game that also, who knows if we'll ever release. Uh, and I wanted to do a hex grid because those are, I don't know, more tactics-y. 
Uh, there are advantages, whatever. We've played a lot of turn-based, tile-based games, you, you're familiar. Um, there are other hex grid libraries out there. Um, I will say pros and cons for, for mine. Uh, as a con, I don't let you choose the orientation. This is how it assumes you're going to orient the board for your um, hex game. If that's not the orientation you want, you're kind of out of luck with this package. And that could be a really strong con. That could be a, a, right, a hard no for you. Uh, the pro, I think, is it gives you a lot more based on this assumption. It was very easy for me to code up lots of other helpful functions like uh, computing distance, um, and also making various shapes. So uh, I don't know. Yeah, make an asterisk. So uh, given a center point and a radius, it will give you make an asterisk shape, and you can even cut a hole out of it. Um, you can make arcs. You can make rings. Apparently, I don't have a demonstration of that. Uh, rectangles and all sorts of shapes on top of hex grids, which are really useful if you want area of effect things for like abilities in your tactics game or something. Um, which again, I made all these because I was making a tactics game, and so I, mean, I think they're pretty practical and, and usable. And hopefully the API is um, very usable as well. Something else I should say about my libraries in general, I try to use modern.net. Um, I think the package that I had for the longest time on like .NET Standard 2, which has super broad support, right? You do .NET Framework even. Um, I think this is the only one that I really had that kind of support for until recently. Now I've said, you know, we're jumping up to .NET 6. So if you want .NET Framework, sorry, you, you can't use it. I think by this point, it's pretty safe to say we don't need to support .NET Framework. The Unity world, unfortunately, is kind of behind. Uh, Godot recently, though, has said, yeah, we're on .NET um, proper now, not, not .NET Framework. So that's cool. So anyway, the world is moving on. And, and I've decided finally for this one, I want to go the newest versions to get some of the latest and greatest features. And one of those features that I love is nullable reference types, which I know can be a little controversial. Um, I don't know, I'll just throw this into this video, even though it's not related, but if you're not using nullable reference types, uh, you really should, and, and you should make them strict uh, warnings as errors. That's a whole thing you can Google about. Um, but it really does help you catch bugs, null reference exceptions, which can a common source of crashes. It's just really good to, to, to be strict with that. And, and I think all of my libraries now at this point are strict about that. Um, so anyway, mono game palettes. Uh, so I mentioned Play Play Mini, that's based on uh, mono game. It's a framework for making games in mono game. This is less opinionated. This is good for any mono game game. And it just contains a bunch of palettes for like classic video game systems like the NES or whatever. And I went scouring on the internet to try and find as accurate as I could um, colors that, you know, these machines really did render, uh, but expressed in modern RGB, which, you know, <laughs> is what we have. It's, it, I don't know. There's a little bit of interesting work there. Um, I think actually having said this, I discovered recently my Game Boy um, palette is a little off, so I'll probably want to fix that. But but anyway, um, yeah, it's just easy. I don't know. If you want these colors, if you want to get these colors and don't want to have to look them up yourself, you can install this thing and now you'll have all the colors. Um, again, for mono games, so it uses mono games color class and not the, um, I forget, like the system drawing, whatever the Microsoft provided uh, color class. It is not using that. So it really is only for mono game. I don't know. If people are interested, I could make one for Windows system color, but I, I don't think that's really that popular. I don't know. Let me know if you think otherwise. Maybe that's something I could make. Um, so anyway, every now and again, I come back to this and add a new palette when I'm interested. Um, I, I enjoy making games. Uh, for me, and we're going a little tangential here, but might as well. I find it really useful to limit myself to a palette, um, partially because I'm not that great of an artist, and, and having that limit kind of forces me to make things that look good, because uh, I can't just pick any color willy-nilly. I've really liked Dawnbringer's um, 16 color palette for that. Um, it, it was designed by an artist to really cover a good range of hues and saturations and values and all these things. Um, he's got a whole post about it. And he's, uh, my impression is it's a, it's a pretty popular um, pixel artist's palette. So you, you may have heard of it before. Um, some things I wouldn't recommend using the palette. Like, like the NES, I would say artists did not design that palette. Uh, certainly that's true for like the IBM PC, some of the old color things. But if you wanted to make something true to that era, uh, you know, these palettes could help you. So anyway, that's another one. Graphics extensions for Play Play Mini. This is a really small collection. It's a pretty new framework. It has very um, few things. Oh, I did recently add these game state transitions to help you do screen wipes and things, again, because of this uh, visual novel I was making. Uh, but um, it lets you just gives you a couple other helper things for doing some interesting graphical things. There's no real theme to this package. Again, it's pretty new. It's it's kind of funky. 
um, the chances that you want one of the things, I don't know. But again, I, I made it, it did something I wanted for a game I was making, so maybe someone else would want something similar. So I threw it together in a NuGet package just in case anyone would want it. Beep Boop is even more experimental. This is another Play Play Mini um, extension package. And this is for generating sounds on the fly. I really want to make um, games that are more tied to music. Uh, and there's a lot of trickiness, especially with mono game and playing sounds and really having the timing perfect. Uh, and so the, I don't know if it's the best way, but a way to get around that that I could think of would be to generate these sounds and do some like old classic, you know, 8-bit sounds just on the fly. Then you know the timing is going to be perfect. Um, and I don't know, it's kind of interesting to think of composing music out of events in a game or something. Or if you wanted to make a tracker, that's another possible use for this. Um, again, this is very experimental. I haven't used it very much in any kind of project. I started to make something but didn't get very far with it. Um, and I think I try to say, yeah, early stages of development has some known issues. So um, yeah, don't, don't use it yet maybe, but if you're interested, um, this is also a package I made using uh, in the early days of ChatGPT. It's like, hey, ChatGPT, make me a function that makes a square wave. Uh, and it was really good at doing that. I was really impressed. Uh, it, I don't know, it was great for that. And it was producing really good results. Um, so yeah, anyway, kind of just a little interesting uh, behind the scenes for that one. So, so that's beep boop. This is the one work related one. I would bet that a good portion of these downloads are just us at work. <laughs> um, there is a project called Mini Profiler, uh, another uh, .NET um, package. This is this is a popular one. If, um, less so, I think today, just because of how web pages, modern web pages, are designed. If you're doing an MVC style application, um, this puts a little like button right on your page that has timings for all the SQL queries that ran. Um, for that, that page. So if you don't know web development, then I probably just said a bunch of crazy words that don't mean anything to you, but it's a performance helper tool for making websites. Um, but again, Mini Profiler is really designed for really kind of old school website design. And I think they're modernizing, um, but something they haven't accounted for, and I don't blame them, is Blazor websites, because Blazor is like really crazy new. Um, there isn't the same level of support for Blazor as other um, framework for making websites. And Blazor is a Microsoft thing, and even Microsoft doesn't support it as well as other things like the IDE support just isn't quite there. Um, but it's what we use at work, and I wanted Mini Profiler. Um, it's a sort of thing that you don't use often, but when you need it, you're really happy it's there. Because um, again, you can just look at all the all the SQL queries that happened to run um, and, and and just see how long they all took. What, what's the slow one, you know? Um, so anyway, very useful. If you've used Mini Profiler before, you know it's really useful, or, or, or other things like that. Um, and if you're on Blazor, you've probably had trouble getting that kind of data. This is one solution. So again, very work-related kind of thing, which isn't maybe my norm, but there it is. Last one we'll talk about, because this one is a joke. I mean, I guess I'll talk about that at the end, but the very last one is um, Field of View. So this is something I uh, created recently. Um, I started to make a roguelike, and there aren't a lot of good libraries in the C-sharp world for making roguelike games. There are a couple. There are, there's a couple really good ones, but there's a lot of assumptions. Um, they're tied to other things sometimes, or just have kind of weird APIs based on like old C libraries and things like that. So I don't know. I had trouble finding one that really had like a, a modern feeling C-sharp API, but didn't make too many assumptions about what technology it was using, blah, blah, blah. So I felt the need, you know, for these reasons to create my own uh, library for with with helper methods for making um, a a roguelike game like traditional tile based game. Um, so this does it's a bunch of field of view algorithms. I'm kind of sad I don't have pictures in here, uh, but I don't know if you've played these kinds of games, you, you know, right? You've got a, a tile map and you can't see around corners or whatever. Um, and there's a bunch of algorithms for doing this, and they all have different pros and cons in terms of speed, how many tiles they show, um, are they symmetric, like blah, 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 all these things. Um, so uh, yeah, I implemented four of them that I thought covered a good range. There are more than this out there. Uh, but I thought these covered kind of a, 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 I don't know, the spectrum of needs that you, you'd probably have in terms of how fast is it, um, how permissive of a, a field of view does it give, and, and all these kinds of things. 
Uh, and, and did it have kind of cast shadows that were intuitive to players, or did they have kind of weird side effects that didn't quite look right? And like all these kinds of things. There's all these things you might want to balance in a field of view um, algorithm, which is, I don't know, kind of weird that it's that complex of a thing, but, but there it is. So um, that's this package as well. I really have thought about, right, I've got this hex grid library, but this only works for square grids. Seems like an obvious, uh, I don't know, miss on my, on my part. Like it would be great to have field of view for hex as well. I don't know that there's many of those out there. Um, so I don't know, maybe I'll work on something like that later, but no guarantees. And then this final one, this is like totally a joke. I'm not even gonna click into it. It's like this fake attribute you'd put on code that really you should just be deleting. I don't know. I don't know why I did this anymore. It was just a silly joke um, attribute. <laughs> and I tried to like, to kind of go with the joke as far, as far as possible. I tried to make the documentation look like really official documentation like you see on Microsoft. So I, know, I was just having fun. This is a purely for fun thing. You shouldn't actually download and use this. I can't believe anyone has almost more than my field of view. To be fair, this is much more recently released than I don't hate it. Um, but anyway, uh, so there you go. Again, these are all free, super permissive licenses. You're not going to get stuck like, oh, no, I can't use this in my project because of X, Y, or Z. No, you can use this code. You can rip it out. You don't even have to really give me credit. Um, and again, mostly game uh, related, but there is this one, uh, I don't know, for work kind of thing for a very niche kind of project. But, you know, hey, maybe that's you. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, there they are. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back to my regular videos, uh, you know, in the near future. Bye.